Now, I acknowledge that I may not be the best person to make this video about relationships because I am single, but I'm going to make it anyway because you guys are not encouraging me to pursue a relationship anytime soon. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Mandy. You're watching Swan Entertainment, and today we are talking about relationship points on TikTok. Like, I don't even know really how to title this. Making your partner perform for internet clout, airing out your partners during laundry for internet clout, profiting off of your partner until it's no longer profitable and then throwing them out. Going to the internet to show, you know, how awful your partner is. And then when they just tell you the logical answer, which is, okay, leave them. That's the logical answer. You say that the internet is soft and that they're jealous because they don't have a man. There's always been something, okay, on TikTok specifically, always. There's always some form of relationship thing happening, always. That's also the nature of social media, I should say, is there's always something where it's like, oh my gosh, yay, look at my relationship. Look at what he's doing. <laughs> there's always something. Understandable, it's a part of life. Of course it's a part of social media because that's life now. We live life through screens, okay? I can't knock that reality because that's why I have a job. But lately I've been noticing a interesting trend. <laughs> we'll get this out of the way now. There's a variety of reasons as to why I'm single, okay? You can drop your suggestions down below. If you want to call me some insane name, I'm 26, you want to call, I, I'm definitely in spinster age at this point. If you want to call me that, go right ahead. Mainly the reason I'm at this moment currently single is I don't like anyone. There's no one that I'm attracted to right now in my life, really. And I'm too busy. I just don't wanna deal with anything, really. And then occasionally when I'm like, okay, maybe I should start trying to put myself out there. You know, maybe I should try. Cause I just don't try, really. I don't go out, I don't pursue, I don't like, talk to anyone. And then I download Bumble and then I find like a really pretty girl, but it's really, they're unicorn hunting. Or I see some guy whose screen name is just put my balls in your mouth and then I delete the app again because why, what happened to hello? But speaking of being single, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Lilo. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And whether you are single like me, or you have a partner, Lilo has tons of options to either get yourself a little something, or get your partner a little something. This one in particular is the Enigma Wave from Lilo. From getting stimulation on the inside and out, you will be getting a fantastic finish and no time. Eight powerful settings and you have complete control over their intensities. And the Enigma Wave uses Sensonic and Wave Motion technology, so you get a completely unique experience with different sensations at the same time. And don't forget, triple the motors means triple the pleasure. Regular finishes are beneficial for mental and physical health. By introducing toys, you can help simplify this practice whether you are working alone or with your partner, enhancing experiences and fostering closeness. Celebrate love this Valentine's Day, whether with yourself or with your partner, and check out the exclusive discounts that are available on Lilo. Whether you and your partner are trying to spice up your Valentine's Day date night, or you're trying to have a date night of your own, Lilo has just what you need to make it extra special. Go ahead and click the link in my description box to check out what's available on lilo.com. And if you use code AMANDA10, you'll get 10% off your order. I hope you have an extra special Valentine's Day and thank you to Lilo for sponsoring this video. Let's just get that out of the way now because we're going to talk about your relationships. This has happened for a long time, okay? And I do think it's contributed to the rise of sprinkle sprinkle content. I should explain what sprinkle sprinkle content is because I do think that it comes in tandem with what we're going to talk about. Sprinkle 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 is actually a phrase that's kind of uh, become synonymous with this whole hypergamous style of dating. Hypergamy is the idea of dating and marrying for elevating your status, dating above your status for various reasons. And Sprinkle Sprinkle is a phrase coined by a YouTube live streamer here um, called Shira Seven. Uh, and essentially sprinkle sprinkle is what she says as like kind of a little catchphrase, but it's become synonymous with this where it's basically that like, oh, here's how to get money for men and things like that, essentially for like elevating yourself and elevating your lifestyle. Now this video is not going to be about that. So if you're expecting me to sit here and like shoot that down or anything, that's just not what we're talking about here. I can understand why that type of content in conjunction with trad wife content, which we're also mostly not going to talk about. Why those things are showing up when we have these relationship test content 
That's what we're talking about. The tests of your relationship that I keep getting shown on my For You page where it's like, oh, don't you want to be in a relationship? Don't you want to date? Not particularly. I just think that none of these things exist in a vacuum and the nature of social media. I can understand why there's always going to be people who are like, okay, why would you put up with this guy when you could have someone who's nicer to you and also, you know, thinks you're the prize and takes you on nice dates and treats you well and all this other stuff, you know, I get it. I can understand why one leads to another. It's like, oh, don't you want to live a soft life? Don't you want to just be barefoot, pregnant, bacon bread on a Tuesday, you know, whatever. Don't you want that? I can understand why those leaps are happening. Doesn't mean we agree with all of it, but still. So there's that, okay? But the relationship test content, because I want to talk about this, because I noticed these tests coming up quite a bit. Now there's been a lot of relationship-based trends that I have not particularly liked on TikTok that I just never have made videos on. Some of them pops up regularly, like this one where it's like, oh, show me your boyfriend wouldn't cheat on you without telling me your boyfriend wouldn't cheat on you. And it's literally women showing like their boyfriend's hobbies that are basically kind of implying like, oh, look, he's kind of a loser. I'm the prize. He's, of course, he's not gonna leave me. He's not gonna cheat on me because he won, which side note, anyone would cheat on anyone. People are sometimes awful. I'm going to say that the relationship test content came about from women posting videos on TikTok. Usually in some, I always think it's pleading for sympathy. That's just how I interpret it. They are asking for sympathy. They are asking for commiseration, but that's typically not what they find on TikTok. I'm not even going to include any of these videos mainly because a lot of times it's like, literally someone crying, talking to the camera. But in a lot of these instances, it's usually a woman either dating or married to a man specifically. And it's them showing something not great that their husband or boyfriend did. Typically it's something that could be deemed as weaponized incompetence. This is from care.com. Weaponized incompetence is a form of passive aggressive behavior where an individual deliberately performs tasks poorly or pretends to be incapable of completing certain tasks. Typically in these videos, what we see demonstrated is weaponized incompetence, or at the very least, a husband not thinking his wife is a human being who has things that they might need from their partner when they are dealing with something. Not always, sometimes it is just her boyfriend or husband might be a little dumb, doesn't know better, she may have bagged herself a himbo, okay? Fine, cool, there's that. Some things you can look up on TikTok. What I came home to, I was sick clean the kitchen with me. I did X, clean the kitchen with me. Just things like that, okay? Where it's like, clearly something happened so that a woman couldn't do her daily tasks at home and clearly the house fell in disarray because the husband couldn't pick up the slack for whatever reason. They usually bother me a lot. One in particular was one uh, of a woman coming home from like a trip with her family or a girl's trip. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter really which one because I don't think the context matters. You should be allowed to go on a trip with your friends or your family, regardless whether you have someone that is also the father of your children. But she came home and literally opened the door like she knew it was going to happen. Or maybe she started filming it again when she opened it and decided to redo it. I don't know, I don't think it really matters. The house is destroyed because no one cleaned up anything in that time. Now, I don't know what happened after that. Maybe he was like, Oh my God, thank you so much for coming home. You know, thank, you know what? I've realized how much I put on you. You know, this was so hard. I couldn't do it. You know, like let's, let's look at, see if there's room in our budget for hiring some help because like, I don't know how you do this all yourself. I couldn't do it. Maybe that happened. I don't think it did based on context clues, but maybe that happened. There's another instance where a woman was uh, away and her husband sent a photo of like, this is what happens when you leave type of thing because the dog was locked in the bathroom or something and clawed its way out. Like a see what happens to your dog when you're not home type of thing. Oh, me and my son were had COVID. My husband luckily didn't get it. Uh, we were upstairs. Here's what I come down to clean, showing that the husband who was able-bodied and not sick didn't do anything that entire time. Love that. Um, there's another one in particular where I do think this could have gone either way. It's the reaction that's typically the problem. Um, there was a woman who was sharing everything her husband did with timestamps 
during the birth, the, the labor and delivery of their child. My water broke at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., things are happening. And uh, he asked me what was for dinner. I'm like, I'm a little busy dilating. I can't fire up the fajitas right now, honey. You're on your own. He takes a scenic route. Just a new route, new way. We've never been this way to the hospital. But later I look at these photos. I'm tits out, like just boop, boobies. Boobies sending pictures of my boobies to my dad. But one of the ones in particular was like sending a photo to the family group chat where she's topless in the hospital bed. Like, oh, we're moving along. And it's like, in some of those instances and a lot of those, like, yeah, there's a lot of like, oh, I'm not worried about you in that. But I interpreted it as literally he's just not thinking through his actions versus weaponized incompetence. Like, oh, I don't actually want to send a, a photo of my wife topless. But in my brain right now, I'm not thinking about her topless. I'm thinking about the fact that she's like delivering our child. Like there's always that possibility, okay? But my point with bringing all this up, there's way more examples I could keep going, okay? I'm sure there's a list, like the, the, the birth control list. There's a girl with a list, okay? And she's just details lists as to like what things can happen to your body and what could happen when you have children and you give birth. It's the greatest birth control ever, frankly. Watch any of those, that, those list videos. Look up girl with the list to find those videos. I will include this one because it is one that made the rounds on Twitter, okay? These videos do typically end up on Twitter at some point. The puzzle video, the puzzle punching video, where a woman made finished a puzzle and held it up to show her husband like, oh, look, it's all done. And she put in the caption like, my soon to be ex. See, it works. <laughs> it works. I told you. It's a little puppy dog. That was cool. Yeah. Now she followed up and said that it was a joke or that it was a sketch or sketch or something, which if it was a sketch, comedy has fallen far. The comment section is, hey, if he punches something near you like that, the likelihood that he's going to potentially one day lay hands on you is not zero. Or you're excited about something and he destroyed it. He doesn't want you to be happy in a way that he can't control, X, Y, and Z. Now these things are leaps, but again, when you put things on the internet, you leave them open for people to instill their beliefs and opinions on them and interpret them how they will. We're not in those relationships with you. We can't know what goes on when the camera's not rolling. We can't know what's going on after you stopped hitting record, after you ended the video, okay? We have no idea. We know the clip that is in front of us, whether it's two seconds or 40 minutes long. That's what we're going off of. Context, sure, it matters, but that's not what we typically have on the internet, and you should know that if you're going to post something on the internet. Whether it was a joke or not, the comment section is always going to be, leave him. You can do better. Why would you put yourself through this? What are you doing? It's just a boyfriend, you're not married, there's no kids, cool, go. Now again, my For You page is obviously going to show me videos from women because I am a woman on the internet. My For You page is learning from me. I am a woman, it knows that. It's going to send me a lot of videos from the woman's point of view, okay? That's just how the algorithm on TikTok works. I get shown those videos and for a lot of people, whether they're in a relationship, a friendship, what have you, okay, parental, what have you, your dynamic are usually ingrained in learned behavior. Sometimes you don't realize you are in a quote unquote bad situation or unhealthy or toxic or whatever. It doesn't need to be abusive. Sometimes it's just shitty. Sometimes you don't realize that until someone else points it out to you, until someone else witnesses that. So there are people who are probably posting these videos who are just like funny haha -ha, or like, oh, look at what my boyfriend's doing to me or like, isn't this bullshit? Like just again, trying to commiserate, maybe looking for sympathy. But then once they see the answer that is the likely answer, because I I do think there are people who share these things and they're like, tell me how to fix him. Tell me what I can do to make him stop doing this thing and be the person I want him to be. I do think that is a reality for a lot of the people posting these videos. I don't think that the reality is that that's ever going to happen. I think people show you over time who they are and once they've shown you that, it's very hard to walk it back. Or what's also a possibility is you make this video, you post it. Maybe you show, look what everyone's saying on this video that I shared with us. And maybe you're hoping that they feel bad. Maybe they'll change for a little bit, but it's not gonna last. I agree, Hermes, because I think that people show you who they are over time. And once they've shown you who you are, it's very hard to walk that back. I'm not even talking about a situation that's abusive, okay? Because that's a whole other ball game, okay? But when you love someone and you start noticing some signs or people point signs out to you, 
Sometimes you don't want to listen to that. And there are instances like this on the internet, okay, where people sh say like, oh, I would not let someone speak to me like that. You deserve better. You shouldn't let someone speak to you like that. And rather than be like, you're right, I'm leaving because maybe it's happened. Maybe it takes some time, but typically what I see is a follow-up video days later or a responded to a comment where it's like, you guys just don't know what relationships are like. You know, you don't understand how amazing they are. And yes, maybe you're right, but sometimes it's giving cope, okay? Sometimes it's like, oh no, this was, this was fake, this was a skit, and it's just... I don't know what you want. Why did you post this if you didn't want us to tell you to leave him? Like, I don't know. That's that. I think there's a variety of reasons as to why someone would post that, but I don't know what you're expecting from the app. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, why would you post this on the app that has like sprinkle, sprinkle content and like, oh, make sure you know you're the prize and things like that on it. Because there's a bajillion and one things on this app. There's so many users on TikToks. There's a bajillion videos posted a day to TikTok, okay? To expect that everyone understands everything that's happening on the app is unrealistic. So again, they're posting in the video, whether they think it's funny, whether they're just like, ha ha, here's my life, because they want to be a content creator, they just want to share, they just want to post their silly little diary publicly. There's a variety of reasons as to why someone would post a video. Doesn't mean they know what's gonna come out of it. It doesn't mean they know what's going to come from it. Maybe you do want women to be like, oh my God, my boyfriend does the same thing. Oh my God, my husband does the same thing. You know, oh my God, my girlfriend does the same thing. Maybe that's what you want, I would assume. That segment was much longer than I initially intended, okay, but that, content, that style of content of like, here's this horrible thing my man did or something that I think is kind of annoying or something that sucks or look at all the extra work I have to do because my man's not doing X, you know, whatever. Because of that content, we now have relationship test content, which also I do think that this type of content, look what my man did content, let's do that. That type of content I do think is a test in and of itself, but I think that's more so a test for the women posting it more than anything because I do think you're testing how you feel about your partner or if how you feel is accurate, I guess you could say, or like, oh, am I doing something wrong? Maybe you are looking for an, I'm gonna keep going into circles of trying to understand the psychology of women with t t questionable men. I'm not a psychologist, I'm just a chick on the internet. Anyways, test content. <laughs> my point with bringing all this up is that I don't think the answer to look what my man did content is relationship test content and making your boyfriend perform for TikTok. I don't think that that's the answer. There's gotta be a middle ground. I know what you're gonna say to that is just, we'll let people share the relationship how they want. Sure, but this trend of trying to prove that your boyfriend loves you is weird, okay? And I just, I get it. I'm giving mixed signals, but like there's gotta be something else in there. There has to be. You may have heard the most popular one, girlfriends asking their boyfriends, would you still love me if I was a worm? Now this one doesn't seem like a relationship test because it's mostly a joke, obviously. Would you love me if I was a worm? Swall Entertainment subscribers? I would talk a lot less. Some of you might actually like that. Would you love me if I was a worm? Harmless enough, okay? Mostly a joke, whatever. But now we have the orange peel test. Is an orange peel about to ruin your relationship? According to TikTok, this trend will allow you to test the strength of your relationship. People are asking their partners to peel oranges for them, and their partner's response is supposed to be an indication of how healthy the relationship is. If they're willing to peel an orange for you, then this small act of service and your partner's willingness to do so is supposed to indicate a healthy relationship. The concept of the orange peel test, essentially, is that if your boyfriend loves you and you say, I kind of want an orange, and you guys have oranges, he will just peel the orange for you before he gives it to you versus making you peel it yourself. Sometimes you ask, oh, do you mind peeling it for me? Sometimes, okay? For some people they do. Do you mind peeling it for me? Like I just got my nails done or, you know, I'm doing this, I'm making dinner. Hey, I kind of want some orange slices, whatever. Simple enough, okay? And if you just want to do this at home, okay? As like a little mental check for yourself, sure. But when you start filming your boyfriend in your home, you know, some of it I'm just like, this is insane. <laughs> like one, I think it's fake because I'm assuming he sees the camera because sometimes they put their boyfriends on camera. Sometimes the boyfriend is off camera and the people post it. And again, I think we go back to the look what my man did. It's like it slides back into look what my man did type of content. There was one that went viral on, on Twitter as well. 
where it was boyfriends just refusing to do something simple, essentially, like peeling an orange for their girlfriend. And then you have a lot of people where it's like, uh, my boyfriend literally would not let me, if I had just got my nails done two weeks ago or a week ago or five hours ago, they'd be like, no, 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 sit down. Orange. Some people on Twitter are like, oh, I asked my boyfriend to peel me an orange and he immediately got up and went to the store because we didn't have any. He went to go buy me an orange because we didn't have orange. There's another one where it was like a girlfriend share, a girlfriend said, oh, can you peel me an orange? And he was like, sure. Wait, you like oranges? Since when do you like oranges? Like he knows her well enough that he knows that she doesn't actually eat oranges. So he's like, what is this test? Yes, what is this test? Then there's the sad ones, okay, the bummer ones where it's like the boyfriend's like just throws the orange and she's upset and he's like, why would I do that for you? You know, and it's like little things where it's like, okay, does my boyfriend actually care about me enough to do this small little test, this small little task? Sure, I get it. If you want to post that to the internet, go right ahead. I think that's just a cycle, you know? Look what my man did, you know? Whether positive or negative, you know? Happens again. And then a guy made a video where he's like, if my wife asked me to peel an orange, I would do it for her, no questions asked, no problem, I would do it. But then if I found out that she had posted it to TikTok as some type of internet test, I would get a divorce because she is not the person I thought she was if she is willing to do that to me. And I think that that is also a valid response because what do you mean you're making me perform for the internet, okay? Now there is this other insane test, which I'm just seeing bits and pieces of, so I don't even know the full premise of the test, but essentially it seems like you take ketchup and you squirt it on the counter and then tell your boyfriend to pick it up What are you doing now? No! No! Stop that! Okay, clean it up. Why? Please. If anyone did that in front of me, I'd be like, what are we doing? Who raised you? <laughs> like, what's happening? I would be like, why? Okay, like, sh I'm so confused. Like, it would just, mm. I'm short circuiting over ketchup now, but like, these, these, these tests are getting stupid. It's just like, oh, how does he clean it up? Does he clean it up properly? Does he clean it up well? The other test is asking if I ordered X, Y, and Z, if I, I sent you to the grocery store with a list for like pasta sauce or pasta ingredients or whatever, but I didn't put the noodles on there. Would you, what would you do? And I don't know what the right answer is. Is it call your wife to be like, hey babe, do we need noodles or do, do we have enough? Is that why you didn't put them on? Or is it just buy noodles? because we're making pasta. You know, it's like various things or like pumpkin pie recipes, but like there's not, there's no pumpkin on the list or something like that. And it's like, oh yeah, do you ask or do you assume? Which I think that's just an incompetence test, not so much a relationship test. That's like, can my man follow simple instructions? Is he a dog? You know, like it, that's, that's what I think that one is. And then now we have flip-flopped around. Don't worry, ladies, we're talking about a man now because this one, I think is wild to me because I do think that this guy was being propped up a little bit for how much he loved his girlfriend. This does happen often where it's a guy who just gets brownie points because again, publicly, he's doing everything right. He loves her so much. Oh my God, what a king. And then it turns around because men are still men and some of them suck. Some women suck too, but that's not who we're talking about right in this current moment. Okay. And they flip the script and they do something not great and the relationship ends. Okay. Typically it's cheating. Here it's not cheating. I don't even know how to fully describe this. Basically this was a guy who, um, included his girlfriend in a lot of his content, okay, on TikTok, okay? He's got about 100K followers over there, which I'm gonna be honest, had never seen his content prior to this, so I don't know exactly what content his girlfriend included, but he had a couple of videos where it was about, you know, what it's like to have a super gorgeous girlfriend. I had recognized his girlfriend, so I think I saw more of her content more than anything, but basically, he would make videos about like what it's like having a super hot girlfriend. Look at how gorgeous my girlfriend is, things like that, okay? And so he was getting a lot of brownie points for being a boyfriend who just liked his girlfriend and that she was hot. That's kind of really it because the bar is in limbo. That's it, okay? It's, it's subterranean. He deleted a bunch of videos of his girlfriend, all of them, in fact, okay? And then made this video that is vaguely unhinged. My girlfriend isn't on my page anymore because she's no longer my girlfriend, she's my ex. And we broke up 
I'm just going to be completely honest because at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter how much we love each other or love each other. We just aren't in my mind compatible to the point where, you know, we could live in the same roof for the rest of our lives. You know, like we're, we're too different in too many areas. We had a lot of similarities and we had a lot of things we loved about each other and it's hard to break up. You know, no one wants to break up. We'd rather it just go well. We shouldn't have to fight like once or twice a week. I'm okay with fighting and resolving, you know, but there's a certain point where it's like, you know, these issues are just going to keep manifesting. It doesn't matter how attractive someone is, how great someone is. If you guys aren't compatible, it's probably not best to be in that relationship. She kind of saw that her definition of love was that two people that love each other, they work through it no matter what. And my thing was, you know, it's not necessarily worth working through every problem just to have another one next week on the same time. You know, like it's not supposed to be that way. There's going to be fights and disagreements, but all too often they were pretty much around the same type of thing. When you have 10,000 followers on TikTok, you can be in the creator beta program. We've talked about this before. If your videos are over a minute long, you can make money from your videos. You can make decent money, not incredible, but decent. Over there, his video was three minutes long. Now some video people are getting uh, mid-roll ads on TikToks, which is a whole separate thing. I didn't get one on his, but basically he made money on that TikTok and he even acknowledged in the comment section when someone said, why would you share this? He put money as his answer because why? Clout's a drug, always. To monetize off of talking about the relationship and blaming it onto me, all this drama and that. She's saying that I posted for money. I did post that video for money. I don't see the harm in doing that. When I post a TikTok, I gain followers, I gain money from doing so. She did the same thing, but she did it before me. Like, this is her crying for a minute for money. Another one she posted, get ready with me, post breakup. Another one she posted over a minute long, monetizing off the breakup. And then here's the final one she posted. Apparently what happened is that they broke up over text message. He broke up with her. She wanted to fight for the relationship. He wanted to move forward, broke things off, and then went and talked about it on TikTok after blocking her on things. I did post that video for money. She did the same thing, but she did it before me. No, she didn't actually. You guys did two entirely separate things. I've watched all of her videos as well as all of yours about the breakup and what you did was weird. Here's a quick little backstory for anybody just joining us. You uploaded this video where you essentially just use TikTok as a journal entry to talk about your breakup. And then she responds to your video with this video, the one you're responding to right now. She says, it's kind of weird that you're talking about personal details about your relationship and breakup here on the internet. And then you made this response saying that you didn't really see the big deal because she made four separate videos talking about the breakup, but you only made one. One. So with that, why don't we take a look at your examples real quick? Like, this is her crying for a minute. She's not crying. I don't know why you said that. She's literally not. I mean, you know, she's clearly sad, but she is not weeping on camera. You also notice that she's not talking in this video. I mean, she's not talking about the breakup. She's not detailing any information about why you broke up, which was the thing that she was complaining was very strange when she responded to your video. It wasn't just the fact that you acknowledged a breakup happened. It was because you decided to tell all these personal details about your breakup that nobody needed to know other than the two of you. You didn't need to tell everybody that you guys were getting into two fights every single week. You didn't need to tell everybody that she was trying to fight for your relationship, but you wanted to move forward. These are personal details that nobody needs to know that she was not sharing. But again, I think that this probably could have been the writing on the wall, okay? Because this brings back to something that I think a lot of us who grew up watching YouTube remember. Do you guys remember when couples channels were real popular? They're not as common anymore. Now we see a lot more family channels, which is a whole other ball game, but don't worry, I'm not gonna go into my normal rant about family channels today. But couple channels were something that typically involved pranks and vlogs and things like that. I'm fairly certain nearly every single channel that had a couple involved, okay? Now I'm not talking like a couple and then they made a family and then now they're a family channel vlog, but specifically a couple's vlog, okay? It's a couple's channel. Most of them ended up breaking up. In fact, while they were still making videos. A couple of them, um, I'll find one of the more common ones cause I, I'm blanking on their names right now, but one of them said, you know, we started realizing that, you know, am I buying her flowers because it's for her and I want her to feel nice and I know she's going to like these flowers or because I know it's gonna be good for the video. And that's essentially what's been happening in hyperdrive on flipping TikTok with these people who make so much content around their relationships. 
And in conclusion, this is why when I am actually in a relationship, I will keep things private. It won't be secret, but it's going to be private. You'll, you'll barely know anything. That's the goal. That's the idea. That's my dream for a relationship. I don't even want to date another content creator, frankly, and not even slightly, frankly. I, I would love someone who doesn't understand what the algorithm is on YouTube. I, that's, that's my dream. But essentially this is that it's like monetizing off your relationship. And then whether you decide this isn't actually working out. So now you have to kind of be the hero for this breakup. You have to be, or the victim in some instances where it's like, oh, I'm the one that made the hard choice. You know, look what they did to me, things like that. Trying to imply that something bad happened in the relationship or that there was cheating or that they're a horrible person and you just realized and that you realized with the help of the internet and like having all these new voices around you. It's so nice to feel seen and heard and now tongue licking the, the comment section, okay? That's essentially what ends up happening in rapid fire. And this has happened a couple of times or what ends up happening is that there are couples who just realize over the course of their relationship on TikTok that they are better off as friends or that for whatever reason, they're not going to take the next step in their relationship. And so they start doing a little more frequent, you know, separated videos, videos on their individual pages, less content together until it's finally a little more obvious that they're broken up because they're collabing with other people. And then the comment section on every single one of those videos for the next two years. And yes, I've been counting for some of these couples. Okay. Is wait, are you not with blank anymore? Oh my God. Love is dead. They broke up. Streets are saying blank and blank broke up. Like y'all aren't going to know if I'm dating a boy or a girl, you're going to know nothing. <laughs> you're going to be like, Oh my God, there's a sleeve in Amanda's video. Is that her partner? Who knows? Like that's, that's ideal. That would be fantastic. And frankly, the relationships that I see, they're all incredibly happy. And most of them do not make the fact that they are in a relationship a cornerstone of their content. In most instances, one of them's barely online or they're both online, never have the crossover or rarely have the crossover of content. And you know what? I want rumors about whether or not we're actually dating. That's what I want. Wait, are they together? I can't see that. That's what I want. That's going to be it. Um, that's the, the, the moral of the story is that I'm, you guys aren't making me want to rush any into, into anything. But anyways, that's going to be it. Have you made your boyfriend perform for content? Have you done one of these tests and then haven't posted about it? Have you found out that you were in a relationship with someone who might kind of think of you like a shoe? I don't know. Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder of a podcast, the Swell Shans podcast. Reminder that Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder I'm now streaming on Twitch. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like support me on Patreon, let me down below. Like on my social media. It'll be all up here. That's going to have a lovely day. Learn to journal. Good night. Journal prompts for people in relationships. Dear Amy, Andrew, Angel, Aslan, Cameron, Corey, Donnie, Elliot, Glenn, Goth, Jasmine, Kenny, Lauren, Literal, Madeline, May West, Medic, Micah, Michael, Nathan, Palace, Pink, Cordy, Rachel, Randy, Robert, Rosie, Ryan, Sam, Skylar, Tasha, Tenzin, Thomas, Heavenly, Victor, Winter, Flink.